echocardiogram in severe pulmonary hypertension. Ammode echocardiogram shows dilated right ventricle, mainly the outflow region is seen in this view. IVS interventricular septum, LV left ventricle, LV PW left ventricular posterior wall, LA left atrium, LV IDS left ventricular internal diameter systolic, LV PWD left ventricular posterior wall diastolic, LV IDD left ventricular internal diameter diastolic, IVSD interventricular septum diastolic, EDV and diastolic volume, FS fractional shortening, ESV and systolic volume, EF ejection fraction, IVS by LVPW septal to posterior wall ratio. When the right ventricle is dilated due to volume overload as in atrial septal defect, the septal motion becomes paradoxical, that is moves towards the right ventricular free wall insistently. Here the septal motion is towards the left ventricle insistently and suggests that the right ventricular enlargement is due to pressure overload rather than volume overload. Estimation of ejection fraction by M mode becomes erroneous if paradoxical septal motion is present. Dilated right ventricle seen on parasternal long axis view on two dimensional echocardiography with color Doppler imaging. LA left atrium AO iota. There is trivial mitral regurgitation jet seen in the left atrium as a blue jet in the left frame with the mitral wall in close position which is of no practical significance. Dilated main pulmonary artery, left pulmonary artery and right pulmonary artery on short axis view of 2D echocardiogram. Usually the aorta and main pulmonary artery are of comparable size. Here the main pulmonary artery is grossly dilated and about twice the size of aorta due to severe pulmonary hypertension. Tricuspid regurgitation gradient in severe pulmonary hypertension of 101 mm of mercury. The TR jet is incompletely visualized. Estimated right ventricular systolic pressure is obtained by adding the right atrial pressure to this value taken as 10 mm of mercury nominally. As the velocity is very high, interrogation is done using continuous wave Doppler.